This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social Association with William Hill and Empire Fight Store. Always a pleasure this Monday evening. We've left it late tonight, Samuel. I said, actually, make it ten past nine, not nine. And you were like, no, I can't do ten. I'm in bed by ten. I said, no, ten past yeah, nine. And here we are. Old man, mate. Old man vibes, mate. I'm in bed at ten. How are you, mate? Things okay? Yeah, mate. All right, mate. All, all good. All good. Just uh, I'm just watching Pirates of the Caribbean, mate. Dead Man's Chest. What a film. I've interrupted it. What a film. See, it's all right, mate. I'll let you off. <laughs> Let's go straight into it. Um, Mad old circle at the minute uh, at 140. And there's so much to sort of dissolve and digest with it all. And I've been asking sort of Eddie and Frank for the last couple of weeks. Not actually being able to catch up with you. Um, mm-hmm. I've just seen now today circulating on social media uh, that Matchroom have reached out to Top Rank, uh, potentially making Taylor Catcher or Catcher Taylor Two, however you want to word it. Um, yeah. On your side, is is this sounding right? Um, I, listen, I've not spoke to Eddie and Frank much, to be perfectly honest with you, but th- listen, th- the fans want to see that fight. It's not a fight we was we was necessarily pursuing because it was not a secret that um, Jack wanted the pro grade fight. We wanted the pro grade fight. And we thought, look, he's with Matchroom. Jack's with Matchroom. It's a logical fight to make. Um, it's not looking as though that's going to happen for one reason or another. And uh, I think the, the reasons are, I mean, they're saying he's got a, a manager with Sandor Martin, but... If pro grade fight fight Sandor Martin next, it's a it's a disaster for for the zone because nobody wants to see that fight. Um, they want to make the Haney fight, which listen, Jack's like fair enough. Do you know what I mean? They want two Americans to box for it. It's a bit of a bit of a kick in the teeth, but it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? It kind of like it, it just you just have to kind of swallow it. So Jack's in a position where. He, he wants a big fight, uh, uh, Parsons. You know what I mean. He wants, he wants a, he wants a big fight. We want a big fight, and um, Jack wants to be in involved in fights that the fans want to see. Now, if that is the a Taylor rematch, then Jack's game game for that fight, mate. He's 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 very game for that fight. Um, I think the score needs settling. I think it's a massive fight for British boxing. I think I'm not like overselling that or overstating it. I think it's a it's a fight that everybody would want to see. I mean, apart from Joshua White, um Eubank Ben. Other than that, I can't think of many better um, domestic fights that can be made. Do you know what I mean? That the fans want to see. I think people want to see it for because they legitimately don't like each other. Like sometimes like you see like not fake beef, but like to, to I know sell what you've like legged on for the cameras, yeah. Whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. Made, 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 yeah. made worse, made worse for the cameras. These two legitimately can't be in the same room as each other. They hate each other. So listen, it's a it's a it's a big fight if it happens. So let's see what uh Eddie's saying. But I think Jack signed with Eddie Hearn for him to deliver him massive nights. So Let's see what uh, let's see what uh, Eddie can do. We've certainly done some tickets uh, up in Manchester for that Lee Wood Lara rematch. Um, yeah, is it a little bit frustrating, perhaps? That obviously we know that the WBC called Sandor Martin, and then they said, "Look, if you fight Devin Haney, we'll allow that." I know that they have yeah. Regis on a free fight deal, and um, like you say, Sandor Martin would have never been ideal. But in the position you're in. Other than Josh Taylor, and we'll go into OD, who's just signed for Golden Boy, and he's obviously chasing that Romero fight, which they pushed the purse bids back for. Mm. Does this feel like one of the only options, but at the same time also quite hard to get yourself up for because of sort of how the last two years have played out? Um, no, not really. Jack's in a position where, listen, he he, he, he deserves a big fight. It's not as if... I mean, look, T- Taylor was saying, uh, oh, they, they were going backwards and forwards on Twitter again and Taylor was saying, oh, Jack's irrelevant. But let's let's be perfectly honest. Like, I mean, with 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 Josh, like, 
unfairly so. Like, I mean, Jack responded saying, look, your fight wasn't picked up. Your undisputed fight wasn't picked up by a UK broadcaster. So Jack's not like, Jack's always had a broadcaster behind him. Jack just needs, I mean, it was meant to be that Taylor fight. It should have been that Taylor fight, but Jack needs needs a big fight. He, and that, and that's the bottom and that's the bottom line of it. He needs a big fight, um, and that's what we're that's what we're we're relying on Matchroom to to deliver us. Let's talk about Ahara to Golden Boy then. Uh, I said to Frank back end of last week on Zoom. Um, I said, look, in a situation like that. Do you not obviously pursue the purse bids? We know that they never happened. And then look to work with OD. A lot of people fancy him over Roly Romero. Yeah, I then do. I fancy, him, I fancy him to, to and then chin. And that rematch. Were you surprised to see that he signed to Golden Boy? Um, listen, Jack's not basing his career on it. Jack beat Ahara Davis a long a long while ago. Um, wasn't the best spectacle, but he, he beat Ahara. But you can only give Ahara Davis credit for what he's gone on to really kind of do. He's picked himself up after, do you know what I mean, a bad moment against Taylor where he got a lot of criticism for. Um, he's had a lot of criticism in general and he's rebuilt himself. He's reinvented himself. His trainer needs a lot of credit. His manager does a great job of him, Lee Eaton. Good, good little team. And I wish him all the best. I know we're, so we're diverting the, from what you were saying, but I wish him all the best. I hope Ahara Davis chins Romero which I think he will. I really do think he will. And I hope he makes loads of money as well. He deserves it. So good luck to O'Hara Davis. But we're, I'm, I'm focused on getting Jack the, the biggest uh, the biggest nights because he deserves it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he deserves to it. see that path explored? Uh, what? To go to Golden Boy? No, but like in terms of like OD's now gone to Golden Boy. I know obviously the post bids didn't happen, but... There was a little bit of talk about, you know, Eddie sort of flirted with the the uh, thoughts of working with OD um, himself. I like... don't, to be honest with you, Parsons, I don't really know. I don't really know. All I know is, is that, look, it, it we, we can't hide the fact we wanted that Progre fight because, again, it made the most sense. They were both in the same, they're both promoted by the same guy, Um Jack, Eddie, Eddie calls himself the uncrowned, undisputed champion. So, it, it kind of made sense. The fight made sense. But look, Devin Haney's back on the market, flirting. And uh I think Eddie's gonna gonna get his man and get it get his uh, get his man. But as I say, Jack's Jack needs a big fight and we're we're, we're gonna get him one regardless. We're gonna get him one regardless, because he deserves it. Linares is a name that's been thrown about, um, maybe a headline in Manchester. Um yeah. As good as Linares is, and this is just me being brutally honest with you, we, we do mm-hmm. probably expect Jack to win that fight. Maybe not what he once was. Um, yeah. It would be have that fight and then, you know, there would have to be something serious after that, right? Listen, the Linares fight, it wasn't us mentioning that fight. That fight was that fight was kind of getting uttered around. That Linares, fight, then? Um. Is Linares what he what he once was? Probably not, because age catches up to everyone. Is he still dangerous? Absolutely. He's fit. He's 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 uh he's wanting a big fight. He's a massive name. The best fighter in the world, who I believe is Shakur Stevenson, was calling him out only a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, listen, if it's presented to us, then we'll we'll consider it. He's a big he's a he's a big name. Um. It's a bigger fight for Jack than some of the other names in the division because people don't know who those people are. But one thing about Jack is, and I mean, and I mean this when I say this, he will fight anybody. He will fight absolutely anybody. But now Jack's had the taste of like the big nights. You know what I mean? He had that, he had a big fight with Josh Taylor for all the belts, and yeah, the result didn't go the way it deserved to go, but it was still a big night. Do you know what I mean? He wants to be involved in massive nights. You heard the reception he got got on the Lee Wood Lara undercard. And there was a lot of people that came out for Jack that day. And I think if um, Jack headlines, they'll come out for him again in force. Let's uh, move on from that front then and talk about some of your signings. Um, Mm -hmm. You are a man who just seems to be taking all the talent up in the Northeast. And we know that that is an area um, that's doing really, really well. A few of them gone to match room, I believe. One of the girls, Conlon Boxing, and one of the n- newest lads at Wasserman. Um, do you want to sort of talk about this? I know 
he had a sort of maybe a little bit of time of, I don't know, uncertainty, but cemented yourself back into a good little position there, Sam. There's no 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 uncertainty passing. No <laughs> There's no uncertainty, mate. Listen, I'm very good. I, I, whatever what anybody thinks about me, mate, I'm I'm good at what I do. I believe there's nobody better at, at this than me. That's just the way I think. People can say that's not true. I'm sure other people have that. Think about that themselves. I just, I I, I just think there's nobody better at this than me. Um, I I I absolutely love doing what I do, and um, I'm pleased to be back managing fighters. I think that's what what I'm good at. Um, going back to what you were saying, yeah, I've signed a lot of talent from the northeast. I mean, I was always after Cameron Vong and Dan Tao. I got both of them, and then the others kind of just followed because they saw that I signed. And it was never like I'll be honest with you, I never kind of scouted Owen Rees, Ben Rees, uh, Mark Dickinson, who I've known for years anyway. Um, they just kind of followed suit and wanted to come to me and like, listen, it's a it's a privilege to work with them all because they're all like. I'm not. It's, it's, it's the old cliche saying, "Oh, they can all be world champions," but the, the the guys, the guys and girl that I've signed, they can all be world champions. So I'm blessed and I'm fortunate. I get to work with some top tier talent from up there. I mean, Owen Reese made his debut. Uh, ben Reese is going to be news news on him soon. Um, news for Ben and Owen promotional deals. Um, Mark Dickinson, he had a little bit of a set, setback, a little injury. Um, so hopefully to reschedule his fight or listen, we're open to making an even bigger fight for Mark Dickinson, Cameron Vong. He's going to hopefully make his debut in September. He's going for all his licensing, which he's, uh, he's nearly all, all complete. Same with Dan Toward, make his debut hopefully in September. George O'Connor's fighting next week at, at Falls Park, signed with Jamie Conlon's Conlon Boxing. Yeah, we're doing good, mate. We've got Muhammad Ali, who's going to be back out on the Birmingham show with Khalil Majid. One of my other new signings, um, yeah, we 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 we're doing good. I know you say you didn't specifically scout the northeast, but it does actually feel like sort of whether you meant it or not, inadvertently, a really good plan. When we were up in Newcastle, God must have been March time when Cyrus Patterson uh, fought Chris Jenkins. Obviously, when you look at um, yeah, I was there. I was Pat there. I was there Mac, and then you look at like Callum French and uh, Mark Dickinson, like you say. All these lads are really coming through to the point where it's almost like a little bit of a building stage, but give it a couple of years and it looks like Mate, a lot of the big nights could be heading up there. That, that's what I mean. If you look at the talent, I mean, I, I've signed pretty much, I mean, the, all of them in that gym, apart from, as I say, Cyrus is, and Callum Frank are both with Charlie Sims. But um, if you look at that gym, it produces incredible talent. That whole gym. Unbelievable yeah. talent. I won't yeah, just talk yeah. about my son. Frenchie, he's a great fighter. Cyrus Pattinson, you're going to get value for money every single time you watch him. So another great fighter. Um, the McCormack twins, hopefully we get to see. I know we've seen Pat McCormack, but hopefully we get to see Luke McCormack yeah. in a ring again soon. Yeah. So, mate, like you say, you think um, you think of these big nights you look at the 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 the, the talent that's coming out of uh, the northeast at the moment you're going to have some huge nights in the northeast very in the very near future i mean pat mccormack i believe is ready to headline soon mark dickinson's a couple of fights away from yeah. from being able to headline a show um and then you say you've got cameron vong who's li literally him and dan Toward are probably two of my best ever signings unbelievable talents the pair of them um but yeah it's really really excited me really really excited to be a small part of uh that uh the northeast uh boxing to put a slight dampener on things we've got to talk about what we witnessed at the weekend and that was maxi hughes in his fight against george cambosis now i think before we sort of go into it and dissect it as a such cinderella man was a, um was a term that was used for so long but i think probably better than that uh when i spoke to maxi he always said that it was just it was always there it never replicated in the ring I think he got a few weeks for John O'Carroll uh, on a lockdown show, and then just I remember watching a magnificent it. run. George Cambosis. A lot of people thought that he won. Um, it happens time and time again, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I watched the first two rounds on my phone, and then I boarded the plane, so I um, I missed I missed it. But he looked like he looked really comfortable. Two or three rounds I watched, and he looked comfortable. I thought, oof, keep this going. He's um he's uh being with a being with the shanks here, and then 
I didn't get to watch it until I think the following day. I can't remember when I watched it, but I watched it. But I saw all the, the messages saying, oh, he's been robbed. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to pass comment because I've not watched the fight. Let me watch the fight. Mate, I watched the fight. It's a disgrace. It's another It's another horrific one. Like, everyone goes, oh, I know Cam Bosis was saying, oh, close fights aren't robberies. Me, personally, that wasn't a close fight. It was a competitive fight, but it weren't close. Maxi Hughes won that fight. Clear winner. Robbery. Disgrace. What do you make of the 117, 111 scorecard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I can't, I'm not going to go into, well, I say I'm not going to go into it. I probably am. It's cheating. <laughs> it's out and out cheating. It's just out and out cheating. You can't score that fight in Cambosa's favour, 117, 111. You can't. Unless you're a, unless you, unless you, you, you you're blind. Like there's no, there's no, you don't even have to like do you know with judges and stuff like that. With judging that these these type of cards, you don't even have to be a no boxing. Genuinely, you don't even have to be a fan of boxing. Like my grandma, yeah, who's like eighty seven years old, could watch that fight, and I'm telling you, she would say, "Maxi Hughes won that fight." Which would probably point <laughs> to the one she thought won. Yeah. No, but you're right, though, aren't you? Someone said, I remember... Re- Mate, I, I think they I mean, said I'm it not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not, I know I'm, I'm using my grandma as a... No, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It, it, you don't have to be a boxing expert to, to know who won that fight. You just Someone on the hard. broadcast said it's almost like he he done the scorecard before he came here and may as well have not watched the fight. Mate, mate, 100... It's literally like he's he's parked, he's parked his arse on a seat for... Can't be arsed tonight. Wrote the scorecard, thought he's the big favourite. Wrote the scorecard down before the fight. And Maxi may as well have not, not bothered getting on a plane. I know we say time and time again, like, what can we do? But is is there anything we can do? Or yeah, this, like, but we, we do it. See, time time. Like, for years we've been saying this and then we keep saying it. And it's like, But we shouldn't have to accept it. Like, when I'm speaking to my pals, yeah, who are big casuals, or if all honesty, they like UFC more, and that pains me. But then they see some of these decisions, and I can't really justify them myself. So how are we meant to like, build... Mate, the- I, I have no... To, to be perfectly honest, like, we, we, we've, we've had it... Listen, we've seen a few howlers over the years and stuff, but what... what we've, we, everyone's kind of given their opinions as to what we could do to make it better. Like using ex fighters as judges, um, there's there's been loads, aren't they? Uh, judges facing questioning after sport. If it's not gonna happen five years ago or ten years ago, like like when there's this big so, because listen, it's not like we're we're in the olden days, yeah. It's not like we're in the olden days. Social media is a a big thing. You understand what I mean? We can all see what happened and then watch it 50,000 times on replay. We can, yeah. you can't get away with anything anymore. So when you are blatantly cheating, such a, it's such a, it's a deep word in it, but like when you are blatantly, well, you're either seriously, seriously useless or you're cheating. There's, there's no like in between there with cards like that. Do you know what I mean? So when that kind of thing happens and we can all, watch replays and watch it unfold, there's no really, there's no excuse for it. That person makes it even weirder than one it is. should never, never be involved in boxing ever again. What, what makes it even weirder is it's not even the fact that a few people in the arena and ringside saw it differently. The whole broadcast team see it one way. Everyone else yeah. watching ringside sees it one way. The only people that seem to not see it that way the judges themselves. It's not even mate, like a discrepancy from the viewer and the who is who's actually there it, live. Like, listen, it's it's it's. I can think. I mean, there's a, there's been a few bad ones over the years. I mean, I remember, and everyone's gonna go. Oh, he's gonna say Taylor Catchell, mate. I wasn't going on about that. And I love the guy as well, Lewis Ritson against Vasquez. Mate, it was oh, one of the worst yeah. decisions I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, he yeah. never won one round. I think he won one round. But, but then Robert just... Smith came out afterwards and was like, "Why should we let people who tweet like get have yeah, a?" Yeah, yeah, no, but it, but it's not it's not like not not just one not just everybody can't be wrong. It's like the Taylor Cattle situation. Yeah. Everybody can't be wrong, and in this situation, everybody can't be wrong. But 
the judges saw it that way. So it's like, and it's, and I'm not having that all at ringside because listen, for sure, you know this when you're watching a fight on telly and when you're watching it ringside, you can see two yeah, different types of fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not mate, it, a one seventeen, one eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, one seventeen, one eleven. The others they'll get away with it because they're they're, they're that that judge has kind of bailed their their poor performances, um, judging performances have bet they've bailed them out a little bit. One seventeen, one eleven, mate. You should never be judging a fight ever again. You you are not welcome in boxing. You think there's a little bit of a problem? This is such a random thing that come up, but obviously it was held in Oklahoma, right? And Regis Prograde thought that was in New Orleans. Some of these places aren't used to hosting boxing. Some of the commissions aren't really up to scratch. No, I, I, that I, I in don't. Ireland a little bit and stuff like. I don't, mate. I don't, mate. I I really don't know, mate. I, I don't. I don't know. I can't. I mean, I can. I can't even really give you suggestions anymore. How do you improve it? Yeah, because the answer to the question is, I don't know, mate. I really don't know. All right, on to the heavyweights, finally, to wrap it up. Um, we are two weeks away from Joshua White. I always thought it was a monster fight, but I'm biased. Um, your thoughts? I mean, I've, I've, I've commented on it loads of times, mate. It's a huge fight. Can't wait to watch it. Who wins? Both careers on the line. Both careers on the line. But must win for both. Who who does win? Um, I'm going to go for Joshua, but... You can't count, count Dillian White out. You can't count Dillian out. It's a great fight. And uh, I, I just want to see a great fight. I respect, really like both men. May, may the best man win. Sam, when I asked AJ about sort of having an opponent that he could sort of get his teeth into a little bit and having a little bit more needle, he almost said that he doesn't care about that and he doesn't want to go back to his old ways. And he said, you know, when we look at heavyweights, my size, they're long, they use that sort of use what they've got to their advantage. But AJ's always been a bit of a, a brawler and now he doesn't seem to be that, you know, maybe not have that same finishing instinct. Is that a worry or is that just a fighter that he's sort of... I think, I think in this fight, AJ's going to try and box for a couple of rounds. Dillian's going to stick it on him and it's going to catch fire and it's going to catch fire very quick. And I think the fight ends early. Lastly, then Fury and Garno. I know that you've tweeted about it, um, but just yeah. me to you personally, right? We're seeing at the minute. I mean, today the crazy money that they're offering Killian Mbappe over at Al Hilal. Um, mate, it's not Killian we Mbappe. Like it or not, it's it's here to stay, right? The Saudi Arabian sort of vision twenty thirty. It's going to be here for a little while. Um, that fight itself, though. Um. Listen, mate. I've tweeted about. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say one thing, right? So I'm not gonna slag the fight off because I'm glad Nganu's making a load of money. I just want to see Tyson Fury fight Usyk. Genuinely, that's the only fight I care about. Tyson Fury. When I see Tyson Fury in the ring, unless it's with Usyk, genuinely, I don't care. Ne next, like I want to see Tyson fight Joshua uh, for sure before he retires, um, but. I'm just not bothered unless it's Usyk because it's the two best heavyweights in the world. I want to see the two best fight each other for all the belts. So not going to slag the fight off. Good luck to them both. I hope they're making loads of money. Love Big Tyson. Loads of respect for him. And Ganu's a great guy with a with an unbelievable story. And he wasn't paid well in the UFC. He's getting paid incredibly well to have a professional yeah. debut. Yeah, he's having he's he's playing getting paid incredibly well to have a, a professional debut. Good luck to him. Good things happen to good people. Hope he's getting a, getting weighed in. He's getting gets to look after his family forever and his kids' kids. Good luck to him. I'm just not interested in in it. If I'm perfectly honest, I know we're boxing social, but I mentioned the Killian Mbappe thing, and I felt like you were going to give me an absolute gold line. Um, no, mate, mate, no, mate, no, mate. I, no, I, mate no, if no, I, mate. I'm Killian Mbappe, mate, I'm I, I'm I'm running there. Yeah. One it's a one season. As well. it's a yeah, one I know. Season. Yeah, mate, it's a one season. It's not not people are going. Oh, he's got no ambition, mate. He's twenty four years old. He's going to earn like a kajillion pounds to have <laughs> one season in Saudi Arabia, mate. You 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 you're running there, Samuel. 
as always, a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for speaking to us at Boxing Social. A final message, because I'm sure there's some fight dates and that coming soon for some of your lads. No problem, Peter Parsons. And fight date for Jack Catchell coming very, very soon. Big, big fights on the way.